Tiffany here with Years of Years, and it's this day in Disney, and we are talking about June 16th, and today is quite a big day. So to start off is mainly why I'm wearing my Link in the Tramp shirt. I'm so happy to have this shirt because I love this movie, and it premiered in Chicago on this day in 1955, and it was Walt Disney's 15th animated feature film. So that's pretty cool. Um, it was the first film that included CinemaScope, and this was a widescreen film process. Uh, this was directed by Clyde uh, Geronimi, Wilfer Jackson, and Hamilton Lusk. As for the stars, we've talked about a couple of them in the recent past here on this day. Uh, Barbara, Barbara Luddy was uh, lady, she voiced Lady, and Larry Roberts as the Tramp. Bill Thompson voiced Jock, <laughs> that cute little Irish <laughs> cutie. Uh, Bill Bauckham as Trustee, I love him too, and his, what his old pappy, is it old pappy? I don't remember that part, like which it is, but he's always got to tell some old story and <laughs> it's just a really cute part of the film. Verna Felton as Aunt Sarah, George Gavo as Tony, of course, Tony and that iconic Bella Note scene, and Peggy Lee, as we talked about her before as well, as Darling, and we talked all about the music for the film and everything with Peggy Lee in another video um, that you could go check out. Uh, she had a big part to do with this animated feature. Uh, the film's opening sequence is one of my favorites. I love the opening song. I love the snowfall. I love the scene coming into the, the little town and slowly moving over to the Darling's house. It's just, to me, perfect. I love it. And uh, the opening scene is the Darling's opening up Christmas presents and um, uh, Mrs. Darling opens, unwraps a hat box, and inside is Lady. Well, of course, they're going to name her Lady. And this is special. If I think we've talked about this before, and I'll probably talk about it again because I love this. Uh, it actually is a, inspired by a real-life uh, thing that happened with Walt and, and Lily. Uh, Walt did the same thing and got Lily a... Um, uh, what was it? A chow puppy. That's right, a chow puppy. And <laughs> the little puppy was actually in a hat box and her niece brought the hat and there's lots more to the story. But this is a representation of that moment in their life. So I love that. It's really special um, and a cute way to <laughs> present a puppy, at least especially back then when you actually got hats and hat boxes. Um, so, some really neat things about the production of this film. As with the deer for Bambi, with Bambi, and I'm sure we'll talk about Bambi in the future, but they actually brought deer into the studio so that they could uh, watch their movement and their personality, and they did the same for Lady and the Tramp. They brought dogs in, all different kinds of breeds of dogs, and watched their movement, their personality, how, probably how their different hair, um, you know, flowed with their movement and such, and um, that I think really brings uh, life to the the animals in this film. And then also, this was really interesting. Mary Blair was supposed to be the background artist for this film, but in 1953, she actually had left uh, the Walt Disney Company to go and become a children's book illustrator. But she had done some sketches and such for the background of Lady and the Tramp. So instead of Mary Blair, Claude Coates uh, was appointed as the key background artist. And for inspiration, he shot photos and film at a low perspective, um, you know, uh, maintaining like where a dog's perspective would be. And you know, watching the film, I've watched it many times, honestly, it's one of my favorites. I definitely have noticed that technique. I've, I feel like it's really from their perspective. You feel in their little world, and I think it was a great idea. I don't know if he was the, one of the first to, to kind of 
pioneer that concept, but it's happened in other films where you have children or dogs and it's kind of filmed from a lower perspective. Um, and cartoons and such. Ivan Earl, I did not know this. I thought this was so cool. So Ivan Earl ends up doing, um, he's the director for Sleeping Beauty. And Sleeping Beauty has that amazing, beautiful, um, I think it's so well artistically done and it's it's very different from any other Disney film. And that's because of Ivan Earl. And we will talk about him, but he is an artist and um, he was from a child. Well, I didn't realize this or know till today when I was learning all about Lady and the Tramp that he actually did 50 miniature scenes for the Bella Note scene. And it's so iconic. Every time you think of Lady and the Tramp, you think of that scene. And he had a lot to do with that scene. And I think that's really neat and part of why this film is so special. So when it came out, what did people think? I guess it actually had mixed reviews. Some people did not think it was that great. Some of the reviewers didn't support it and some did. Um, but <laughs> it's a beloved classic. And as I've described with, with the different people involved and their talent and thoughtfulness, you can tell why we love it so much because they were very creative and very smart. I, to me, it's a beautiful film and I love to watch it many, many times. Probably too many times, but that's okay. <laughs> so I hope you en enjoy checking out, maybe go watch Lady in the Tramp today. <laughs> I know I probably will. <laughs> and then up next on this day, another really big thing happened back in 2016. I think this is amazing. Shanghai Disney, um, Disneyland opened, um, which is pretty cool. It was the first uh, Disney park or Disney Resort on uh, China's mainland after Hong Kong Disneyland. And the theme park is loaded, located in Pudong, Shanghai, China. And it is operated by Shanghai Disney Resort and um, Shin, the Shindi Group. So it's um, a combined effort there with the, the Shanghai Disneyland. Um, the first Disney resort, like I said, on mainland China, and it has six themed lands. So it opens up with Mickey Avenue, which is their Main Street entrance, uh, their Main Street USA over there. And then next up is Gardens of Imagination with Dumbo's Flying um, Elephants and the Fantasia Carousel. Uh, it also has Marvel superheroes at Marvel Universe meet and greet, so that's pretty fun. Um, then, it, then in Fantasyland, they have a Seven Dwarves Mine Train, just like at Disney World. I don't know if there's a little bit of variation, but they do have that. They have Peter Pan's Flight, and then the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, and I've had heard so many stories about people loving the Many Adventures of of Winnie the Pooh, this particular one with its uh, trackless ride system and it's just really well done. So that's definitely something we'll all have to ride if we make it to Shanghai Disneyland. And then they have Adventure Isle with Roaring Rapids um, and then Roaring Mountain and Soaring Over the Horizon, which is a hang gliding flight experience. That sounds very interesting. And then they have a treasure cove with the Pirates of the Caribbean. It's an 18th uh, century Spanish harbor featuring the Pirates of the Caribbean and Captain Jack's uh, Stunt Spectacular. And then they have their Tomorrowland. Um, they have Tron Cycles uh, Power Run. And I know I'm looking so forward to that here at the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. I know they're in the process and we've seen a little bit of the process starting by and they're they're getting it ready. I cannot wait for that ride to open. I love the Tron films. They're so cool, both the old, the classic, and the new. So I'm excited to ride this ride. Um, Star Wars Launch Bay Stitch Encounter. What? They have Stitch Encounter. Lucky them. And then Buzz Lightyear, Planet Rescue, Jetpacks, and the Star Wars Path of the Jedi. Um, so it also has the Enchanted Storybook 
castle. So this castle is different from any of the other castles because instead of just focusing on one of the princesses, it incorporates all the different castles from the, the Disney parks all over the world. It has a walkthrough experience, a character dining, and a boat themed attraction. This castle must be big because it has a lot going on inside of it. It sounds really neat. Um, so this is the first of the Disney parks to open. Um, and so they all are getting to go have fun at Shanghai Disneyland, but not for long because July 11th we'll be heading over hopefully to Walt Disney World and getting to enjoy our parks here again. So that was a big day, a lot of information. So go check out about more about Shanghai. Check out some of the POVs for their rides, especially Tron, because I think it's really based they're gonna be very similar to the one here, I'm pretty sure. Uh, excited for that, and Winnie the Pooh. Um, it's interesting, some of their rides. Check them out, and go watch Lady in the Tramp today, and I hope you have a great day.